Welcome back to The Rebirth. I'm your host, Shay Marriott. Joining me tonight is 100 Black Men Philadelphia Chapter. All right, guys, we're going to jump right back into it. So going on, well, going off to the break, um, we were talking about what well, we were starting a conversation about what they see is what they'll be and the importance of, you know, these young teens, kids being able to see, you know, what they possibly may want to be when they grow up. Right. So can you touch on that a little bit? So what they see is what they'll be is actually our national model. So every every you know chapter, our nationals, that, that's what we all believe and that's what we, we push out into the community. And so if you look at the um, um, the flyer that we that we have in here, one of the things we did this year to in, in, encapsulize it is that we looked at every profession from brothers in a chapter. And so we, we created this image so that the youth and the parents could see that this is not a pipe dream. So when we talk about becoming an electrician, a police officer, a banker, you know, a chef, uh, you know, a businessman, mm -hmm. you know, brothers in the chapter are already doing this. Right. And the most simplest way to really do anything in life is just hang around someone who's already doing it. Right. When you, you can literally look at families and see three generations of doctors. Why? Because the one kid grew up under a doctor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so it was just part of their life. You, you'll see, you'll find business people running the same family. You know, I, I literally come from, both my parents were entrepreneurs. Okay. So I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. I came out of college, went straight into business. So you tend to just follow those folks that you are, are like and around. Right. You know, uh, EPMD had a, had, a, had, a, had a line. You hang around nine broke friends, you're bound to be the 10th one. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is show the folks, you know, bars. Yeah, come, <laughs> come, come be with us. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you will hang with folks that are doing these things, mm -hmm. and we will show you how to do it. And it's, and it's not like it's it's schoolwork. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Because you're just going to have conversations like, like Bill is a, is a federal police officer. So those wow, folks that want to go right. into law enforcement, okay. you know, as you're, you know, as he's showing you how to, you know, do some drills or, or do some hoops or whatever, you can learn about, well, how did you, how did you do that? Did you have to go to college? What do yeah. your grades look like? So it makes it real practical. You know, you look at Brother Les, Brother Les was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to get shot at if I do that? Can I get money for college if I do that? And, right. and it's a real easy conversation. And these are the ways to get young folks into these professions and it's very different you know most of our youth when they go to school 80 percent of the teachers don't look like they're from their community right mm -hmm. and so they're not as relatable you know one of the things i remember when i was growing up i wanted to i wanted to get a computer science degree but i never knew anyone who who had a computer science degree so I didn't meet a black person with a computer science degree until like my junior year in college, as crazy as that sounds. I mean, okay. didn't meet anyone. Right. But now I have a computer science degree. Wow. So young folks, I can talk to them yeah. and tell them, hey, yeah. this is what you do. Yeah. It is, it's not magical. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's important for them to see these examples. Like, yeah. you know, you're not going to, you know, it's not like the, the, the boy in the corner selling dope. You might not have the BMW within the first three months, but you can get it. And once you get it, nobody can take it from you. There's not going to be any police. There's not going to be anybody trying to jack you for it. Well, but, but you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's yours and you got it legally. It, it's a slow grind is the best grind sometimes. And I think kids don't get that part. No, they, don't get that they want it right now. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You said you, you are a federal police officer. Um, Eli. Got no warrants. <laughs> Eli, you got any warrants? <laughs> he, he don't got time to fool around with me and my petty parking tickets. I'm, off I'm just checking. <laughs> he was a resurrectionist and people like that. He ain't got time to be messing around with me. <laughs> I have my helping head on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But that's awesome, man. I mm -hmm. And you know what I noticed? I noticed how that was really big on here, and I was going to yeah. I was gonna mention that because, you know, we have so much um, – drama in our community when it comes to the police and mm -hmm. the dislike and the hate and all of that. So I was wondering if that was a reason that that was kind of bigger than the rest. Mm -hmm. So yes, 
Let me let me give you a little, just drop a little something for you. In Philadelphia, you can start as a police officer with no college education, making fifty eight thousand dollars a year, wow. and probably the best health insurance that you can you can get in the city. Mm. Black folks in Philadelphia, we have we make the least amount of money of any race in the city. Our average income for a black family in Philadelphia is thirty grand, thirty thousand dollars. So that's you know parent and kids. Yeah. So if you can take one person in that household and they become a police officer, it fundamentally changes the dynamic. Right. Every twenty black people that become Philadelphia police officers, that is a million dollars into the black economy. Wow. That's a million dollars we have to spend. So we we have to be more strategic in what we're doing. And yeah, there's a lot of noise out there, a lot of nonsense about becoming a cop. Mm -hmm. But we have to stand up and and, and and show the folks. Matter of fact, we got another brother that comes in and volunteers with Ian, and he is a cop. He's a Philadelphia cop. Okay. Right. All the kids just think he's cool because mm -hmm. he brings, you know, drones to fly around. Oh, you know, wow. regular dude. You're right, yeah. regular dude. Just happen regular to be a cop. Guy, man. Right. So we have to, you know, we have to sort of reprogram these things into the community. And one other thing I, I just want to throw at you. There are two professions that black people need to dominate because these professions, number one, you'll never get laid off. Uh, you'll get paid regardless. And they have the most impact on us. That is police and teachers. Mm -hmm. We should dominate those professions. Mm -hmm. If we did that, it would be probably the greatest transformational thing to impact our whole community. But we shy away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We were just talking um, last week on the show, we had um, the importance of black educators in the school system. And we had, of course, they were two young black females. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the um, conversation was about how there was not uh, male, black males in, in education. You know, we they're not there. And it's so important, um, you know, like you said, to be able to show up in that in that discipline because the kids need to see that. Right. And, and, and the issue is that we discovered that I kind of touched on was pay was salary. If you are a man starting out your first year of teaching and you have a family, it's hard to take care of your family on that. Teachers, they, yeah. as important as they are, they get, they don't get paid very well in the yeah. beginning. So you get some years under your belt and then you get some masters and you move up, but that's tough. So I'll just say we're, we're not doing it right. Like many, and I, I've worked as a consultant in charter schools for over twenty years. Mm -hmm. So, and I and I did data. I worked with the data in schools. So I, I got to see the certifications, mm -hmm. and, and the, I just got to see so much inside schools. And one of the things I found when I started going out to the suburban schools and basically with the white folks, mm -hmm. you know, it was challenging for black many black teachers to have one certification. When I went to the suburban schools. The white teachers, they had three certifications. Mm. They understood how to master that system and to get paid mm -hmm. from you. You can make a whole lot of money in education. Right. We just do it wrong. Right. Why, why are we behind in this field? Because we are so, and this, I'm, we are so focused on things that don't really benefit us. Mm -hmm. Identity foreclosure. 80% yes. of our boys want to be professional football, basketball players, rappers, and drug dealers. Right. 80%. So it's a whole lot of brain power not being used on becoming engineers, yep. you know, owning businesses. There's a whole lot of stuff we just not figuring out because we focused on the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. We have, um, if I can piggyback on that, um, government companies that are contracted out for government for, I will speak on, with me being an employee at Lockheed Martin, they, companies like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, BAE, they're starving for minority engineers. Wow. Wow. Starving for them. They're begging for them, for us to go get that education and let's bring you on. Because they know the power of what our particular race of yeah. people can bring yeah. to their industry. Yeah. In all type of facets. And it's just they're giving out STEM money. They're jumping on. They they just they just giving away the money. Yeah. 
And if we can somehow push the narrative to the young folks that being an engineer can be a popular, rewarding movie, right? 